If Dallas was ranked among the top three teams in the West, Luka would easily be this year's MVP. He's one rebound and .2 assists shy from averaging a 34-point triple-double. And what's even more impressive is when you consider the players he's surrounded by. Kyrie is a great teammate, but he's just not Cleveland Kyrie anymore. And the rest of the team are, with all due respect, average players. Their best scorer behind Luka and Kyrie is Tim Hardaway Jr. with 15.7 points per game, which is solid but nowhere near an elite-level player. Their latest additions in PJ Washington and Gafford are proving to be right moves, but Luka's title dream is still far down the road. However, when it comes to pulling off a one-man show, nobody does it like Luka. Yesterday's win against the Nuggets was an amazing team effort, and things were just clicking for them. However, they must improve in the long run, since there were many holes in Mavs game that deserve an entire video for themselves. Arrow delivers! Doncic to tie. He got it! Kleba. Looking in for Irving. Irving for the win! Oh my! A self-pump finish! Hello again, basketball fans, and welcome back to Hoop Vision. Today, we're diving into Luka Doncic's skill set, limitations, playoff hopes, and, of course, the race to the NBA MVP trophy. Luka is one of the most talented players of the new generation, and it is certain that after the retirement of LeBron, Curry, and Durant, he will be one of the faces of the NBA League. It is no exaggeration to say that there is no type of player like him in the entire NBA. His style of play is so unique that it contradicts the NBA's principles of player selection, mostly based on speed and athleticism. One of the reasons why he is almost impossible to guard is his creativity on offense. Luka lacks nothing in his arsenal, so being 6.7 feet tall and stronger than the average point guard results in a hybrid player who scores an incredible 34.4 points per game, dishes out 9.8 assists, and grabs 9 rebounds. Luka's ability to drive inside and go all the way to the basket is second to none. In addition to his standard reading of the defense and using of empty lanes, he is great in situations where he forces the bump and still manages to score 2 points from difficult spots. His drives are so effective mainly because his offensive arsenal is so diverse. He can easily find a teammate in the corner or behind his back, move to the side and shoot a high percentage fadeaway, or stop and torture you with pump fakes until he creates the perfect timing for release. All this is even more impressive considering that Luka does not run past his defenders using speed but perfectly times his movement. His fundamentals are impeccable, which makes sense given his background. European coaches put a lot of emphasis on them, and Luka has worked with some of the best ones ever since he was a talented prodigy. However, even though he was the youngest EuroLeague MVP ever, before Luka's arrival in the NBA, many could not even imagine the level he would reach. Here's a reminder of what basketball media thought about Luka once upon a time. Tell me about His Luka. His feet is slower than rush hour traffic. Doncic at 6'7", will get exposed for all of the inadequacies that Dur I don't believe he's a lottery pick. Not a lottery no, pick. No, Luka Doncic has already shown me if he never improves 1% and stays at this level the rest of his career, he's going to be a Hall of Famer, and he is, by the way, going to improve. To be fair, the NBA media doesn't pay much attention to European basketball, so they probably didn't even have a real insight into Luka's potential. On the other hand, talking negatively about something you don't fully understand is not something that should be done at such a high level as NBA basketball. Currently, a unique phenomenon is ongoing in the basketball world, which will perhaps bring European basketball closer to the American American audience and close the gap that exists between the continents. European players have become dominant in the NBA, while American players have begun to show an increasing level of understanding of European basketball and are adapting at an incredible pace to the EuroLeague's coaching systems. Guys like Jabari Parker, Mike James, Kevin Punter, and Zach Lede are having a great time in Europe. They have key roles in their teams, and they show the opposite of what has been complained about American basketball players for years, that they approach basketball too individually and that they're difficult to fit into to the team style of play. Moreover, Luka's teammate Dante Exum came to Dallas after a great season in the EuroLeague where he scored 13.2 points per game, which is a big deal considering games are almost an entire quarter shorter, the court is smaller, and there's no defensive 3 seconds rule, which makes driving into the lane even harder. Unlike Luka, who became a basketball star in the EuroLeague and only took a step further to the NBA, Dante Exum rejuvenated his career in Partizan and returned to fulfill the potential that was predicted for him when he was drafted by Utah. This year, Dante is shooting a great 47% from beyond the arc, and a large number of his threes came from Luka's passes. Speaking of threes, they are another reason why Luka cannot be guarded like other point guards. If you go under the block, you will be punished every time. Just take a look at this shot again. Arrow delivers! Doncic to tie! He got it! 
It's more than obvious what a mess the Nuggets made with defending the screen poorly. Murray went chasing after Kyrie while Gordon was left stuck on the other screen. When Luka received the ball, Gordon was too far away, which gives Luka enough space and time to set his body towards the basket and make a three-pointer from his favorite spot. The thing about Luka's three-point shot isn't just that it's accurate, but that he's able to create a shot off the dribble in a way that most lighter point guards can't. He likes to go one way and then shift his body weight to the other, giving him even balance and enough time to place the ball above the forehead, thus creating a high release point that is almost impossible to block. If we go back to the fundamentals, we will see that Luka's shot is one of the most technical ones out there. The offhand is perfectly set so that the ball gets a desired direction, while the follow-through gives it enough spin to make the shot soft. This technique helps Luka get a friendly bounce, even if the shot isn't launched perfectly. All this results in Luka shooting 38% beyond the arc this season, which may not seem like a lot, but considering that he takes a large number of shots from uncomfortable situations, it can be said that it is a great success rate. If Luka had a clone of himself in the league, he could cruise around the corners and wait for open three-pointers, and it would be crazy to imagine what kind of stats he would have then. For now, his three-point shot is more than an effective weapon, but what makes Luka complete is that even when when the shot is not serving him, he has other options to make life difficult for defenders, one of them being his post-up game. Unlike your average point guard, Luka is able to push even small forwards under the basket and secure points for his team by pure force. If he has a good shooting night, his post-up game is impossible to defend. It happens that in addition to double teams, he attracts a third player, which leads to easy points for his open teammates. It's no wonder that Derek Lively is shooting 75% from the field this season, considering how much attention Luka gets on himself. When when you play against him, the defense has to defend the pick and roll by fighting the screen, so Luka is always in a position to have one to two seconds during which he has an open lane. If he drives towards the basket, someone must help and leave their player open for a potential kick out pass. If there is no help, Luka can just walk towards a layup or dish to his center for an easy dunk. We have already explained that it is impossible to defend the pick and roll against Luka with the defender going under the screen, or he would shoot like it's the all-star weekend. Given Luka's offensive qualities, Dallas is the sixth offense in the league right now. So the real question is how the Mavs would look if they had better players available. The only reason why they are not ranked higher in the West is their poor defense, which is among the 10 worst in the league. The Western Conference is a place where you can't win all the time by going into a shootout with teams. Defense is actually the only thing that prevents Dallas from being a real title contender. So it'll be interesting to see what changes they will apply to their roster next season. Speaking of Luka's teammates, another way he makes them better is by utilizing no-look passes. The way in which which Luka manipulates the opponent's defense is truly incredible, and is something that no coach can teach. What Luka and Jokic have in common is reading the game and predicting things that have yet to happen on the field, and it seems to be engraved in their DNA. Luka has a great sense of finding teammates without looking, drawing the focus away from them to the part of the field in his line of sight. Countless times he started the offense by looking at the right corner only to drive right and make a bullet pass to the left corner. Every time, the result is almost the same. The officials want to give you the benefit of the doubt. Easy, nice play there. Shoot. Bullock for three. Currently, Luka is surrounded by pretty good shooters, so it's no wonder that he's averaging a high number of assists. He literally chooses how his team will put the ball through the hoop. Dallas's big problem is how to allow fewer points on the other end, which could negatively affect their run in the postseason. They are 4-1 in their last five so far, which is great for their confidence, but there are still a lot of games left in the season where Luka and the rest of the team will have to perform at a high level, especially if they find themselves in the play-in against difficult squads such as the Lakers, Warriors, or Suns. Luka's and Kyrie's clutch abilities will be able to carry the Mavs to a certain point, but the ultimate goal of winning the title seems unattainable this season. Despite Luka's great stats, it is almost certain that the MVP award will bypass him this year as well, considering other candidates like Jokic, Giannis, and SGA, as well as the fact that Dallas will probably fight for just making it to the playoffs. Regardless, none of that can stop us from enjoying Luka's skills and looking forward to everything the NBA future holds for him. That's it for today, dear friends. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments below what you think of Luka his game, his MVP winning chances, and how far can he take Dallas this year. Thank you for watching and growing this channel. Make sure you don't miss out on more NBA stories by hitting that subscribe button. See you in the next one.